<laughs> Hi, Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Today. Got my partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz, and a very Hi. special guest today, Joe Walsh. Uh, hey, Joe has some really awesome information he's going to be sharing with us on the latest developments with uh, PPP, the Payroll Protection Plan, oh. and I guess some of the work he's been doing with... Uh, some of our legislators and I guess the press as well to uh, get some uh, maybe gaps in understanding closed to hopefully uh, PPP will work better for us uh, than, than what it does now. Um, I want to swing back around to tell it like it is because on Friday we were talking about needing to decide between this tax credits maybe make more sense than PPP and building a calculator to, to, to help us figure that out. Well, a couple of things have happened since uh, we had our call on Friday. You remember what we say? You know, like a month's worth of stuff happens in 24 hours. Well, yeah, this this is this is nothing different, especially uh, when you when you go over a weekend. Um, there's two two ways that, that that you can qualify for the tax credits. One is have some uh, agency shut your business down, and the other one is. Uh, your revenue quarter over quarter drops below 50%. You have a 50% drop in revenue from, from, from the prior year's quarter, I believe what it is. Um, the small print in, in all of all of that means though that if you qualify, you're not necessarily qualified for the entire year through January. You have to basically meet the qualifications each and every quarter and Joe kind of helped me out with this too, because I think your CPA shared that you can kind of stay in the range where you're qualified as long as your revenue doesn't hit 80% of where it was the prior year's quarter. Prior year, that's right. Yep. yep. But when you start looking at the numbers like that, it's like, eh, you're not even guaranteed to get it for the full year. And hopefully you wouldn't because, you know, by the time you get to the second half of the year, hopefully you got enough revenue going that, that, that you would be in a range where you wouldn't be qualifying. So, the short story is the PPP gives you the money up front, which is, is really awesome. And it looks like it, the federal government's really pushing people towards that. So some regard, you don't want to want to swim upstream on that. And with the uncertainty of the tax credit, it was our judgment that building a spreadsheet to verify something that we seem to already know just based upon where, where everything's pushing us made no sense. So, you know, we're, we're believing for, for anybody in the, in, the, in the house cleaning industry, PPP would, would, would make more sense, especially with some of the uh, more later uh, developments that, that, that show Joe's going to be sharing with us here because he's uh, actually been, been a heck of a leader for us in the industry, bringing to light that there's some uh, gaps in the logic of PPP and how it's really going to work for a restaurant or a house cleaning business or anybody who wants to bring their employees back but doesn't really have any viable work to do at the moment. So, Joe, you want to share with us a little bit about about what's been going on and what you've been doing? Yeah. So for the for the PPP, the Payroll Protection Program, you uh, just to you know a quick review. It's a, a loan, and um, there's a portion of the loan that's forgivable um, if you. Uh, the the portion of the loan that you use to cover payroll costs is forgivable, and they'll they'll forgive the uh, the amount equivalent to uh, the first eight weeks of your payroll cost from loan distribution. So um, if you maintain 100% employment, if you don't maintain 100% employment, they prorate the amount that they'll uh, forgive of the loan based on the percentage of the uh, numbers of employees that you have. OK, so it's it, this is important to to understand that, you know, you'll still get some back if you don't reach 100 percent employment, but you're going to only get a percentage back. OK, so um, what does this mean, though, for us? If you are a business that has stayed open and been able to maintain um, full employment or close to full employment, the PPP makes a lot of sense. It especially makes sense if you're a professional uh, in more of a white collar um 
work environment where people can work remotely and things like that. So take my accountant, for example. My accountant is a small practice. He's got seven employees. He's been able to keep them all on the payroll, but their revenues have dropped off precipitously because people are not doing their taxes right now because everything's on hold and people aren't able to pay him because people are having to close. And so he has applied for the PPP and my accountant will most likely get 100% of his payroll costs for eight weeks covered to kind of help cover the period where things have really slowed down. And for someone like him, this could be the difference between a profitable year and a marginal year. And so I'm not questioning the value of the program itself. What I'm saying is if you compare that to someone who is in my situation or Tom's situation, um, and Liz, are you closed? I actually am not aware of that. You're not closed, okay. So if you're in this, if you are though someone who had to close either because of a government order or because so many of your customers canceled, um, you know, like a drop in business. If I have to take disbursement of that loan now, which I'm being told to do because the funds are going to run out, then my eight weeks starts now. I don't have any employees to pay because we're not cleaning anything. So I'm not going to get, it's really unlikely that by eight weeks from now, I'm going to be at hundred percent employment. So because of that, I'm only going to get whatever small percentage of employees I have back. I'm going to get a small percentage of their pay forgiven. So as someone who's had to close and has been impacted a lot more severely than say my tax accountant, I'm going to get much less in the form of a forgivable loan, which is kind of like a grant and much more of it is going to end up being a loan that I'm going to have to pay back. So that's a hole in the logic of the program because it's, it's, like skipping over those of us that have had to close and focusing the most of the forgiveness on those that can stay open. So, and when you think, Joe, even for a lot of companies that are open, they've lost a material amount of their revenue. So, I mean, they would, it doesn't really make as much sense for them as what I think the legislators were, were thinking when they wrote the law the way they did. Right. And even, you know, in the cleaning business, you know, I've been we've been talking about this now for a week, kind of ad nauseum, I feel like. And um, in the cleaning business, they, uh, you know, let's say you've had to lay off half your people. Well, how are you going to bring them back if there's no customers there? So some people say, well, you just pay them to sit at home until the demand returns. OK, well, um, that is okay, I guess, but with the way that the unemployment insurance legislation that has come down is working, you're going to have to start paying the people that you have working a lot more money to have them making more money than they would be just being at home and being unemployed. So that creates a whole other aspect of this. And, you know, it, we would almost need that PPP money so we can supplement our employees' wages so that those who are working are making more money than those who are sitting at home. As a business owner, I don't want to be put in the position of having to tell my employees, you need to come back to work for less money than you would make sitting at home. It's just putting me in a terrible position. And I don't think that the policymakers intended that, but it's the way that it's all playing out. And it's, you know, it's a gap that has to be addressed. So, so Joe, uh, the gap that you're addressing then, is it also going to deal with, uh, so like the medical, all of the medical workers, everybody that's out there on the front lines, they're all working and they're making their same wage that they've always made. But the people that are sitting at home, they're actually going to be making an extra $2,400 a month. So is that uh, what you're dealing with, is that addressing that gap on top of the PPP or are you just um, focusing on the PPP currently? Well, right now my hard. focus is just, well, my, my focus is just on the PPP and how it affects businesses like ours. So, you know, it was, what I did was I put, um, I kind of got together with um, a, a, a fellow business owner in my city who also happens to be our state representative she owns a, a brewery and um, they make really good beer, actually. And um, she's, uh, she's a lawyer by trade originally and is now a state senator and, um, and owns a really well-respected uh, business in town and, and is looking at the same issue. 
And she is very well connected with a bunch of other people in the hospitality and restaurant industry. And there's this growing consensus that, wait a minute, this isn't really working for us. Like we're watching all these other businesses get a bunch of loan forgiveness and we're kind of being left in the dust. And so, you know, those of us that have had to close are in the same are in the same boat. So the focus is on this sort of hospitality, you know, businesses that are non-essential that are being forced to close. Um, or maybe your business is deemed essential, but there's been such an evaporation in demand that you haven't been able to stay open. Um, either way, the, the outcome is the same because you're closed. You can't pay people um, to do that. And you've got no revenue coming in. Um, there's no demand there. So and, and, and the employees are better off just sitting at home. Right. But while you're at it, what Liz is suggesting is mention the fact that the $600 federal unemployment on top of the state benefit is working against us too. I mean, why is, while we're at it, let's go ahead. Well, it is because then what do you say to the first responders who are making less than 26 bucks an hour? Yeah. You know, your, your local EMT is not making $26 an hour. It's crazy. You know? It's, and and uh, neither are the people, a lot of the people working in the hospital. So, you know, that's not right either. I mean, I'm not, it's just. It's like a double whammy though for small businesses. It is. And I do think, you know, I'm not approaching this in a way that's, you know, I, I'm not, this isn't a partisan thing. This isn't something where I'm just trying to raise the issue and make as many people aware of it as possible. And in, in, in my mind and in the mind of, you know, my state representative, and I agree with her, the best way to do that right now is to just go straight to the press because th we have to get the word out. You know, I mean, we've all contacted our state legislatures, uh, sorry, our um, national delegation and shared the story, but they're more overwhelmed probably than anyone else right now. And the story needs to get out to the public that like, this isn't going to work the way it's intended to work. Because do, you have a, do you have the, a press release or something you can hand to us, Joe, that we can all do it? How can we, how can we get on board? I love that idea. Let me work on that. <laughs> I think, I think it's a good idea. This. This is like you are witnessing it developing in real time. Like my phone is ringing over here and it's a reporter, I think from the Bangor daily news trying to call me. Um, uh, but which is part of the reason I have to hop off the call in, in just a little bit, but um, yeah, let's do a press release and we'll get some language together and, and then we can send it out to everyone and you can contact your local media, and, you know, say, Hey, this is, this is what's happening on the front lines of this. The media want to tell this story and the policymakers want this money to get into the right hands. I, I really just think this is something that just, if we just raise awareness, we don't have to be hysterical, but we just raise awareness and just say, Hey, this is kind of how it's coming down. You know, it's not really working that well. And part of it is getting into the right hands. And the other part of it is making the rules such that it can actually be productive, be effective. They're creating a scenario where, you know, you, it makes no sense just to hire people if there's nothing being produced, if there's no economic value being generated. And if, right. you're, if you're a restaurant and you don't have any, any guests, what's the point? If you're in the cleaning business, you don't have any jobs, what's, what's the point? Right. And, you know, I've, I've heard some people say that part of the thinking is, oh, they, they want you to pay people to sit at home on their couch so that they're spooled up and ready to go. I, I've i never seen it anywhere that that was the intent. Um, if that actually was the intent, I'd love for someone to show me, like point that to me, like what it seems to me the intent of the law is to get people working, not to pay people to stay home. Um, we already have funds allocated for that. We already have the unemployment funds have already been allocated for that. So, um, you know, uh, so uh, the simple change I'm suggesting is rather than say it's an eight week period from loan disbursement, give us eight weeks, but let us choose the eight weeks. Give us like a four month period that we can say, okay, sometime in this four month, you have to choose your eight weeks. And that's what we're going to base your loan forgiveness on, because a lot of us are just going to need a little bit more time to get ramped up. It's just too early. The government's still telling us to stay home, you know. But we still need to pay our rent and other things. Give us the ability to do that for that period, you know, the from day one. From day one. Give us the money now, but we need to be able to need more flexibility in the eight weeks. That's all. So what about this idea, Joe, that I'm hearing 
Um, people are saying, yeah, they want to give you that eight weeks now because they want you to put the people to work now, but they want you to find other ways. Be creative with the way that you put them to work. Um, maybe get them to do some marketing for your company or something so that when June 30th hits, that when supposedly that's their, their date right now, right? So that you can, you'll have enough business that people will come to you and mm. you'll be able to school up quickly. That's, I think that, I I guess, hmm. I've never seen that any, I, I, again, I haven't seen any sources say that that's what they, they want you to do. And by yeah. they, I mean, the, the, the Senate committee that drafted the legislation, I mean, it, right. that, I've not read that that's, that they're kind of saying, do anything you can to get them back on payroll um, in, in what I see is people reading into the law in, and sort of assigning that to it. Also, yeah. I think we all know I can only put so many people to work hanging up flyers. I've got 30 frontline staff, you know, 30 house cleaners. I can't put 30 people on the street hanging flyers up until my customers come back or even 10 or even, you know, so that's just not... I. I I don't believe that was the intent, first of all, because it just doesn't make any sense operationally, like th from an operations perspective. I'd do it if the government said, hey, you know, be a patriot, hire people, like here's some money. OK, but that's not what I'm being told. I'm being told like what I take from it is we want you to open your business back up. But yeah. on the other hand, we're kind of being told in some states you can't or maybe we just don't have the demand there to do it. And so, you know, if that's the case, we just need more time is all. Is so, that, Karen, is that, that I, I think you're I think you're right, Joe. That makes sense to me as well. I I what I've heard is just a lot of people responding with different things that just trying to figure out what it could possibly mean because the way it's written right now doesn't seem to make sense. Well, and, right. So, you know, that, that's why I'm trying to go to the source and find yeah. out you know, if there is some credibility to this, oh, what we really want you to do is pay people to sit at home, then I want to see where that was written, you know. And the scary part about that is you could you could do that. I mean, you could, you know, invest in training or door hangers. I'm, you know, I'm sure there's ways that you could, could, could put people on the payroll and spend all the money. But if something happens and you get down to June 30th and you don't have every position filled, I mean, that's a scary thing if you weren't really generating generating any revenue off of all those salary dollars and something happens at the end and you find out that you aren't getting the 100% uh, of, 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 of the grant that you were planning on because, you know, you spent a ton of payroll money and really had and then and, and then you may have to lay people off again, okay, which is like a terrible thing to put employees through, especially considering they could have just stayed at home and made a thousand bucks a week in my case. And do we know, and, do, do we know and, how long people have to be employed after June thirtieth in order to, to to meet that requirement? There's no language that I know. Of. Is that meeting the requirement? There's no language that I know of about needing to stay past June thirtieth. It's but just it, that you you're going to be laying off employees in what could be a different environment by then. Like right now, my state has a temporary. Like if you lay people off because of COVID nineteen, it doesn't hit your unemployment insurance um, experience rating. So in other words, we're not paying into that. Um, but if I have to lay them off a second time, by that time, maybe they've lifted the, the the temporary emergency order. And now I am paying unemployment insurance for those people, you know, so it's 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 risky. And I, I, I guess I find it hard to believe that that was the intent when they drafted the law. I feel like if that was the intent, we would have been reading about it. And it also just doesn't seem to make any sense. That's what the unemployment insurance is for. All of this happens so very fast, and there's so many ways for unintended consequences. Uh, I, 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 I agree. I just just think that this was was an unintended unintended consequence that 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 went by unnoticed. And to some degree, I have to think it's on the radar screen now. But there's so much moving at the same time that you know I don't I don't know how they fix all this at once. Yeah. No. I. I you know. I agree, and that's why I'm. My approach is, is, is 
measured and and thoughtful and considerate that you know the the policymakers have been working around the clock to to make this happen and there's bound to be mistakes and i think we need to work together to figure out what the mistakes are and just you know kindly but firmly point out the flaws and like where holes need to be addressed and um like i said i think the press is the fastest way to get that out there so i think I, it's I, smart I to remember them. Sorry, what? Sorry, Joe. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm saying I, I think it's remember. smart to remember. Cool. We're, we're talking. Uh, I think it was smart to remember that if they put $2 trillion out, that they're doing it because they're trying to build us up, not crush us. So exactly. I just just keeping that in mind, that, that, it, that it makes a lot more sense to move forward. You actually teach this, Liz, assume positive intent. Mm -hmm. And and I would say yeah, just beyond assume positive intent, if you just look at the logic of the situation, absolutely. They're trying to help us. They're not trying to to you know not help us. So destroy us. Yeah. Nobody wants us to fail. No, nope, they don't. So we have to help them help us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, Linda has a question. She wants to know, should we even apply for the PPP yet or sh and hope that it works out or should we wait? What What do you think? Um, uh, Tom, you can weigh in on this. I, I My opinion is apply. You can always say no if, excuse me, you can always say no to the money if over the next few days developments come out that, you know, give you reason to believe it's better to, to wait. The reason to apply now is at as of today at 5:25 p.m. the funding is limited. Now there's encouraging developments. Tom, you forwarded me an article in the Wall Street Journal that was very good um, about you know the the Treasury is trying to free up more money to go into this program. But as of today at 5:25 p.m. it's limited to 357 billion or something, which is going to go away like that. So it's better to get it in now, and if you can always say no to it. The, the Treasury has said they're going to go ahead and um, you know, request Steve Mnuchin, the head of the Treasury, said that uh, you know they're going to go back for more money if they need it. Nancy Pelosi said she'd you know approve it and sign off on it. So you'd think they would get more money, but at the same time, the Federal Reserve had made a statement today where they're going to start buying this debt back from the banks that are making these SBA loans, basically freeing them up to loan even more money. So. There's a lot happening there to get more money, but um, you know we had a discussion earlier today about you know sometimes it doesn't pay to be on the bleeding end of some of these things, like uh, with the uh, emergency loan. I remember a couple of weeks ago we were all printing these forms out and getting them all ready to upload, and we come back Monday morning and all that was gone. And you know the rules for PPP have changed a couple of times over the last few days but um i think we're to the point now with ppp that the banks are are taking the applications and all of that at least at this point seems to be working now that now would be a be a good time to do it i don't think that you're going to be wasting your energy I, I think that 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 you know initial part of it anyway has been figured out and you know, might as well go ahead and get in line like like joe said when it really gets down to okay you've been approved and this is the amount of money you'll have more information then than you do now and you'll be able to make a decision if you want to take those money or not. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My only concern around that is uh, you apply now, you get approved now, and then it begins those eight weeks. If there's no adjustment to, to the way these monies are being dispersed, you can't say, or can you say, no, I don't want this, and then wait and apply again in two weeks because one of the things that is listed on the criteria is that you have not applied for another one of these loans. That's a good question. And you see what I'm I, I do. And, and in terms of could I apply, deny the money and apply again later, uh, I, I would think that the intent of that is that you're not applying for more than one at the same time and receiving disbursement for more than one at the same time, because they're being dispersed through banks, you mm -hmm. could conceivably apply for one at Bank of America, Two different and banks. 
one at, you know, Wells Fargo and get both of them. Okay. Yeah. And so what they're saying is yeah. they, they want you doing that. But, you know, I would ask my bank for guidance. On, like, could I cancel this application and reapply in two weeks? It would seem to me, but again, I would talk to the bank about that. But, you know, your, your, your point is, is, is well taken, Liz, and I guess we've, you know, contemplated that, and that kind of gets into, you know, Joe's efforts to, to, to bring this whole dilemma, you know, to, to the press and shed some light on it. Um, ideally, we would have that eight-week window further down the road, so, you know, there there could be some, some, some logic in, in, in using that strategy. It's just you know, the risk of, of how long even the program is going to, going to be there and will, will the money's actually be there in spite of, we've heard a lot of things that, you know, the, the $10,000 grant, which may or may not, you know, even be happening at the $1,200 that was going to be in your bank by now, but it, but it's not. So, you know, I don't, with all good intent, I don't think that people are intentionally misleading us, but this is just rapidly changing and you have to weigh yeah i'd rather have it later but if i wait is there a chance i won't get it at all get it at all yeah yeah and that's where yeah yeah and, yeah. and uh, let's see rebecca uh, i'm just reading what rebecca has to say she just applied to the bigger bank yeah i think i think a lot of people are finding that the bigger banks know that they have a way to do it online, et cetera. Um, smaller banks are still a little clueless. Um, uh, Natasha wants to know if we don't use money, can we send it back? Yep, mm -hmm. that's the way it is so far. And you're, 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 paying, you're paying 1% interest on it. You're paying 1% interest. So even if you just keep take the money, sit on it for a few months and ended up having to give most of it back, you're gonna pay very little interest on it. Yeah, you wanna you wanna my 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 one piece of advice would be you wanna take that money and put it like in a in a in a, in a savings account, a checking account, and try very hard not to spend it until you really have your strategy and know what you're doing because it's really cheap money. It's the closest thing to free money you're ever gonna get from an interest standpoint. And don't be in a big hurry to give it back. I mean, it doesn't come mature until two years. And again, that's the way the rules are written now. All of that can change. I can't imagine they wouldn't necessarily raise the interest rate, but I could see them maybe extending the amortization. I don't know. I haven't heard that, but I mean, who knows how this could could could, could evolve to to potentially be to your benefit down the road? Yeah, yeah. Um, are there any other questions um, for this particular yeah. portion? Joe. Thank you for, 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 for taking a slice out of, you know, your, your busy day. I know you're doing oh, you're some welcome. stuff right now. So you're get welcome. out there and, um, you know, get the, get the word out for, for all of our benefits. Okay. And definitely. And let uh, us know how we can yeah. And Liz, thank you for the press release suggestion. And I'm, we're going to, I'm going to get something together. So I'll, you know, we'll, we'll post okay. it. Um, I'll let you guys know and we'll, we'll get something out there. Yeah, once you get that, we'll put it. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll put it a whole bunch of places right. in, in the okay. resources here, and we'll, we'll get it out. We'll do a newsletter and send it out to everybody. Yep. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Joe. Talk to you soon. Yep. Bye. Bye, Joe. Hey, Tom. I remembered that um, you were going to tell it like it is around the different training programs that were available for. Um, you're, I saw you, the light bulb just go on there, Tom. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, we couldn't remember that. Matter, could we? Um, no, no, we I know, didn't. I know that uh, GBAC, which is the Global Bio something, I forget the acronym, but anyway, it's part of ISSA and affiliated with, with, with ARCSI has a training program coming out that um, for house cleaning comes for ARCSI members in particular, there's going to be a discount where I have it from a very reliable source. We're going to be able to take that uh, class for $49. And I think the retail price is like 300. I heard that was coming out today. It, uh, I saw it's, a press wasn't release. Wasn't that coming out today? 
He did. There's a press release out on it that uh, got uh, along with with some some of the CBT gets all these press releases. I don't know if it's formally been announced yet, but um, it is. It, uh, it it's going to be happening, and I think it's going to be relatively soon. Well, I've been seeing a lot of different training programs coming out, Tom. Um, it seems like everywhere I look, I'm seeing another, somebody has another certified training program. What, what do you think about these? Are these valuable? Um, most of them are pretty inexpensive. Do you think it makes sense in the, this climate to take as many of those as you can and get as much certification as you can? Or, or do you want to try and find certification that actually has some chops behind it? Or what, what do you think there? Yeah, I would be, I know you, you know, a, a, a training is good, but not all training is the same. So you really need to to, to look at, you know, the, the, the learning objectives from the training. You know, what's the syllabus? What are, what are they actually going to be training and how does that fit into your particular business? And if there's a certification involved and certifications really – you know, in order for, for, for a certification to be of value, it needs to be recognized by the general community your, 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 as, as having value, having merit, and all of these things you need to consider as well. I mean, I'm not in a position to say yes or no to any one particular program, but, oh, yeah. um, you know, you, you want to be, you want to be strategic about it. You need to be thinking about strategically, what do you want your business to be? You know, um, the GBAC for, for like $49, you can learn a lot about, you know, how to do forensic cleaning and what the, you know, the deep cleans and all of the, 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 the important stuff that, that, that the people that are doing the, the heavy duty, you no know, disaster work are, are doing, or at least that's my, 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 my quick understanding of, of what that is, is about. Um, I'll share my screen here and I'll show you the, 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 the press release. Maybe we can read it together. How about that? I didn't do that right. Here we go. Bang. Can you guys see that at all? Yep, we can. Or at least I can. Um, so what are we doing here? Frontline cleaning, essential, online course, video presentation. Patty is really good. Nurse includes infant origin symptoms, treatment of COVID, as well as information responsible for cleaning and disinfecting that would be contaminated, and armed with the knowledge needed to respond and recover from biohazard in the workplace. Okay. Did you all love that? <laughs> that well, was good stuff, y'all. You know, it's it it, it isn't crystal clear to me what the, what the, what the syllabus is, but it sounds like that this is going to give you a lot of the science, which is important to have. And, you know, a, a basic understanding of, of, you know, what the, what the forensic, you know, deep cleaning is about. And even if you don't do that, most of us don't, most of us aren't prepared to do it. I think it's really good that we have a basic understanding of that because, you know, you're going to get a phone call and somebody's going to say that, hey, you know, we have this office space here and, you know, two people had COVID-19 and want you to come clean it up for us. Then you'll know how to do a risk assessment. You'll know, understand what it would take to do that responsibly. And, you know, you might say, hey, I don't do that type of work, but you're doing it from an informed perspective rather than just grabbing, you know, your cleaning caddy and going over there the way you would any other home because you didn't have the information to know any better. 
Right. So, uh, I would I would I would say for forty nine dollars, this is a deal. You notice it says one hundred and fifty bucks, but I've got it from an informed perspective who would know what they're talking about, saying that uh, there's going to be a discount coming out for uh, RC members that we can do it for forty nine, which is really pretty cool. Yeah, that uh, it seems like a no brainer for forty nine dollars for sure. I heard that somebody, and I'm not sure who I, uh, Sharon Cowan, Debbie Sardone, maybe, is putting out an HCT light program. Have you heard anything about that? I heard it was happening, or maybe it did happen. Did it happen last week? Friday. Oh, did it already happen? Friday, Saturday, maybe? Oh, oh did I totally I miss it? Well, I, I, could I, know, uh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong on that. I. I, I was talking to somebody who was telling me it was happening Friday and Saturday, but I don't know for sure. And I haven't talked to Bruce like a week or so. I talked to Bruce about a week ago and he, Bruce Vance was, was actually going to be teaching the course and we're going to be doing it online. And it was uh, basically the same material that is in the HCT manual. This, uh, you know, this guy right here, yeah. uh, there was no certification, you know, test to go along with it, but, but, but the same information. And um, yeah, that's a good class. Rebecca said she got the invite. And that it did happen. Oh, well, I, I well, I, I'm thinking that that would have been a good thing to have all of my people that were not working that to do the people that are, you know, laid off right now. I have I have a good chunk of people that are laid off. So, uh, hmm, okay, well, that's a bummer. So that's a great program. Uh, I think getting the information is more in my mind the information is more important than the certification but i do think that moving forward certifications are going to matter more than they ever have in the past to our clients i think they're going to be looking for once they know to look for it and that they're out there they're going to start looking more than they ever have we were talking a little bit last week about the need for some some specific training for for house cleaning companies to deal in a COVID-19 world not necessarily how to do the uh you know the deep clean uh forensic type cleaning but just you know how do we keep ourselves safe how do we we, we make sure that we're creating value for our clients and in doing all this in a responsible way um you know, we could do that here in, in 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 with this group if if we thought that would uh, that would be useful. I I don't see how it couldn't be useful. How how do we go about doing that? How do we go about getting that? I don't think anybody's going to turn down free free training. I don't know. I'll share something. I just jotted down this week and. And it's not complete yet, but just to give you an idea. Okay. And, and I'm not sharing my screen yet, but I'm working on it. Bang. Okay. What well, might make sense, Tom, if you already have some sort of a an idea for the free training, um, maybe these calls could transition into the training and plus, you know, 10, 15 minutes of Q and A. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. This is very soft and squishy at the moment and needs to be refined, but, you know, just explaining what COVID-19 is and symptoms and, you know, uh, who may have the disease and the type of questions you need to ask your your clients your prospective clients and you know your, your your cleaning technicians as well everybody's working for you you need to ascertain if anybody may have been exposed to it uh you know how does it spread and a lot of information pertaining to that how do we stay safe well, you know the hand wash sanitize kind of get into that and, and and let me let me back up I'm, I'm i'm visualizing this as something that you would want your cleaning technicians to see this uh, would be 
you know, I, th I feel it's really important that we, we have something that your house cleaning technicians would have all this information, share that with them in a way where, where it would be actionable to them. Um, you know, how do we professionally uh, clean a home and stay safe? You know, everything, you know, above plus, you know, PPE and, you know, understanding how to break the chain of infection. How do we break the chain of infection, kind of getting into that and what's sanitizing, disinfecting and so forth? How do we, uh, how do we need to know or what do we need to know before cleaning a home during this crisis? You know, questions that we need to be asking. What is the scope of work, and what does the scope of work like uh, look like uh, in the uh, COVID nineteen world? Um, want to talk about the, the tools that we use, hardware and software. Software basically are towels and mops, and the hardware is everything else. And how do we use them? How do we clean them? How do we care for them? Uh, what cleaning products do we use and talk about about those a little bit remember uh chat liz from uh hct training yeah one of my favorite takeaways actually chemical all the time. chemical heat agitate and time and, and what that means to us how do we know when the uh, scope of work is met um well, what do we do after meeting the scope of work? You know, we still got to clean up our equipment and, you know, as individuals, we need to be washing our hands if we were technicians and taking some other precautions. How do we handle the mops and so forth that we, in, in towels that we use? And if we want to, we could, could talk a little about the deep cleaning or the forensic cleaning just to kind of give perspective. We might have questions about misters and foggers. I don't know. Some of this is just like I said, these are just random notes, but those are some 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 possibilities that 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 we could take some time and either just do a deep dive in one day for for a few hours or spread that out a little bit of a time over a number of days. If we're doing it for cleaning technicians, though, I think if we did it all in one block and if uh, you know, it'd be recorded, but it would be something that that we could all get our our, our cleaning technicians to see. It's going to be non-prescriptive. We're not going to say use this product or use this tool or use this cleaner, but everybody's going to walk away knowing why it's really important to wash our hands and knowing the difference between sanitizing and disinfecting and knowing the basics that we need to know in order to, to do this safely and responsibly. What do you think? Well, yeah. Education. I, I, I love the idea of getting the education into the, the people, into the hands of, and into the minds of the people that are actually the front lines going out there and actually cleaning the homes. I think that's awesome. Um, I would like it if we could figure out some way to get um, a certification around it, a CKI certification. I don't know what type. Don't even have a clue of how, how that could happen. But um, yeah, Rebecca, Kimberly, Kelly, they're all saying they, they love that idea. I, I love it too. I just, um, I do think that that certification piece is going to be important to people um, at, at some point in the near future. I guess it's not, at, it's nowhere near as important to the cleaning business as having the people that are doing the work, knowing what they're doing and and understanding it to the degree that they want to do it. So part of part of the big struggle here is when the people don't understand, don't have a clear why around why around why they're doing these things and and all of the stuff that's behind the scenes that it just don't understand it. It's hard for them to continue cleaning, washing their hands, doing all of the important things for the long haul. It's easy to fall back into old patterns until they understand, you know, why it's so important. So I really love the idea and the information into the, the cleaning professionals' hands, the technicians' hands. Um, people, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, a lot of people would like it, Tom, not just, okay. not just you and me. And you know we might come up with we might come up with some type of uh, 
quiz. Um, you know, I guess there, there's a, a, a used to be a standard for training that I don't know if it's out there anymore called cleaning industry uh, training standard, and they use the term knowledge checks, which is basically just little quick mini quizzes, but. You know, we can have some throw some questions in, have a have a, a quiz or something at the end, and if everybody, you know, did did well on that, do some type of certificate of completion or something. I mean, it's not it's not like the AC certification. It's not a, a formal, you know, peer reviewed whatever. But at least it would be be something that would yeah. would, would you know represent that somebody participated in the class and took a quiz at the end and showed, you know, that they had, you know, walked away with the, with the, the knowledge that was intended to be gained from the program. And, and pretty much that's what we're seeing everywhere right now, Tom. That's, that's the certification that everybody is getting, you know, all these different places, they're all having different certifications there. We're not talking HCT level certification, just, you know, I, I, I got this information. I paid attention. I learned all the answers and, check uh, you know i and i i think it would be helpful for especially for our, our technicians because they also really like to get that certificate of completion saying that they did learn this stuff and they like to show that they learned it too they're going to want to show the owners of their companies look i you told me to watch this i did i learned stuff we could we could do that we could we could, we could put it online and you know if they, they participated in the class and if they uh, and you know, whoever whoever participates in the class, they complete the, uh, the, the, the test and, you know, they yeah. meet whatever the, the requirement is of the test would, uh, would we get a certificate of completion. We can do that. Yeah. Cool. OK. I love it. When do, how do we start? When, when do we start? <laughs> what do we need to do? <laughs> <It's probably laughs> I take this part. on you and me. When would be. What? Okay. So this is going to be something that we would do in a, in, 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 in one slug, right? Well, I mean, we could, or we could just use the same time frame, time period, because there's no reason why people couldn't go to cleaning business today and watch a half hour and then another half hour and another half hour and another half hour. Okay. Or 45 minutes. We just break it up a little bit each day. Yeah. Well. So we're on this. We're already yeah. doing this. We're free for an hour every day. We're here anyway, why not, huh? That's what I'm thinking. We're gonna we're here every day for an hour anyway. We're doing this for free anyway. We might as well be giving and that's why I'm saying maybe half hour, forty five minutes. You know, fifteen minutes of whatever is new because there still is new stuff keep coming up all the time. Okay. Right? And then do this. I think we could be ready. I, I, I love it. We could be we could be ready to start by Thursday. Okay. All right. Then, uh, uh, let's start. Say it again. That way, that, we could start Thursday. That's soon enough. I, I I hope that way it would give everybody an opportunity to talk to to their their technicians and kind of get everybody you know kind of filled on on on, on what we're doing here. And this will be for the benefit. Yep. We'll do this. Okay. I mean, we'll have we'll have all our castle keepers uh, technicians dialed into this too. <laughs> I, I'm not stupid, Tom. I know that's why we're doing it because <laughs> we want our people to all yeah. learn all of this stuff. <laughs> I thought we were kidding. <laughs> That was kind of the genesis, actually, because we were doing all of this because this is what we wanted to do. And it's like, well, we're going to do it. Why don't we just go ahead and share it with everybody? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're, 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 we're all right along together on this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, start on Thursday. That sounds great. Um, all right, you guys, everybody on this call, uh, let everybody know we're going to do free training. And this is, what do we want to call this training? COVID-19? Cleaning in a COVID-19 world. Cleaning in a COVID-19 world. And it won't just be for COVID-19, y'all. It will be information that's applicable to any of the new, new things that we're having to deal with out there. It'll, um, what, what, what are the things, Tom? What do we call them? Pathogens, 
germs. Pathogens. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But you know, all of we're gonna, we're, we're gonna work, keep this, work with now. You know, we're not gonna get into. I mean, we'll 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 explain. You know, what's the difference between a bacteria and a spore and a and a, and a virus and just take a real quick pass at that. But, you know, we're not going to get into a lot of detail and, 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 you know, how you, how you deal with, with every pathogen out there. Cause the one that we're concerned about at the moment is, you know, the whole COVID-19 thing. So at least at this pass, and if, you, if we're having fun doing this and we can go back and get more junk, cause there's a lot of stuff that we're skipping over that you really need to know in the world of being a professional house cleaner, that's not mission critical to, to, to the task at hand in terms of dealing with, with, with COVID-19. So and we can, we can get broader later. Kelly hit the nail on the head right there, Tom. Emerging, um, emerging pathogens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all the new scary stuff that people aren't prepared to deal with yet. So mm -hmm. I think it's great. Okay. You want to come say hi? Who's there? She... Hello. Who's there? Hey, hi, Katie. Hi. Huh. Somebody's no school right now, huh? <laughs> oh, I guess. They're all... I bet I have an idea what training program she's going to be working on. <laughs> yeah, she's my helper. She's Tom. She's Tom's little helper. <laughs> this is my my daughter Kate. She's a uh, freshman at Clemson this year, and I guess she's at home for the rest of the semester, or online learning. You get to do with me for weeks at a time, <laughs> and vice versa. It's a bonus. Yeah. Um, Heather is saying she loves the idea of her staff being certified, but maybe not on this platform. Okay, so. This is the platform that we'll probably use for right now. Uh, for just for this, we want to get some free training out there. But Heather, um, hit it, Heather, hit us up if you got you know some other ideas as to what we could do and how we could, could create more value with this. I mean, we're our goal here is to get everybody trained, get the education into the hands of the people that need it, the frontline people. That, that's our goal here. You remember, you remember like the $10,000 grant that was going to be in our bank account in three days? Well, we're actually going to try to at least get this out within three days. That's, uh, we're actually going to. You mean the advance, Tom? You mean the loan advance? Well, with the, yeah, right. the, one, the, 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 the program formerly known as grant. Oh, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um. Um, I can't hey, wait. Crystal. Yeah, thank you. Same to you. Chris. I'm sorry. I just I, I was getting ready to say I can't, wait, I can't wait for Joe to get them all straightened out. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. What were you saying, Liz? Uh, um, Heather was saying she hit us up with a personal message, and I was saying thank you to Crystal as well. She was saying thank you for being leaders and being so giving. I was saying thank you to her. She's doing the same, right? She's also one of the people. This whole thing makes me feel grounded in some way. I mean, just the whole world has changed and, you know, it was like today's Monday, but it could be Saturday. It could be Friday. It doesn't really matter. Somebody asked me, how's my weekend? It was like, it's like any other day now. It's just a blur and um, I don't know, just being able, this is, this is, gives some some sense of 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 of, of community and makes it makes us feel good <laughs> true it's true helping everybody yep i don't know what you said but you made heather die laughing of why oh the day you said something funny i guess rather laugh and cry right yeah, very true. Very true, very true. All right. Anything else before we, anybody have anything they want to know uh, for Tom, what he wants 
that they want him to tell like it is tomorrow? I would really love to hear you tell us at some point in time, Tom, that somebody somewhere got some money from someone. <laughs> I keep hearing about all this money, but I sure haven't heard of anybody getting any of it yet. We've got a few folks that have gotten unemployment checks that we that we furloughed two weeks ago, but which is unemployment. Is but not not the, not the, not the, no. the best information we had on that, and this was Friday, that that was a, that, well, you're sharing that in Washington, the actual you have to apply for it, right? The six hundred dollars. Yeah. In the application yeah, process, yeah. like three weeks out, right? Yeah. And as we as we've we, seen, I heard. Go ahead. I heard the nineteenth was the soonest anyone could expect any money. When they expect that was on that or when that they document. No, no, they could already. They already applied on the first. But the soonest anyone could expect any money would be the 19th, was the very soonest. I don't know. I said Kimberly says amen. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. Crystal Ham has a friend that got her PPP deposit today. Holy. Wow, that fast. So wow. he yeah. would have had to have applied for it maybe Friday, a few instances, but. Dang, that is awesome. That's why they're already that's why they're already low on funds. <laughs> they're already giving it out. <laughs> okay, good to know, Crystal. Thanks for that. Uh, okay. okay, so Rebecca says this is the business owners group, correct? I think that is where she is concerned. And if we give all our staff access, right now I can pick and choose which sessions I share with them. So they might you. not want to share everything. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, we're talking about some stuff here that we probably wouldn't want. But we've got a couple of days to think about this. We're not going to start till Thursday. Yeah. I mean, we could, we could do, we could, you know, I don't know. That's a good point. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's chew on that a little bit. But we're, we're, we're going to start doing the, uh, the, the, the science-based, you know, cleaning training for, for, for COVID-19 by Thursday, if we do it on this call or if we do it on some other platform, I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll have some discussion. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with a good idea on that here in the next day or so. A lot of moving parts. What do I, what do I mean to do here? Bang. All right. Anything else? Anybody else have a tell it like it is topic that they would like Tom to investigate? I like to keep him working. He get he gets bored. I'm getting, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm been working from home. I'm getting soft here. You gotta gotta keep me on. <laughs> okay. So cleaning business today. That's uh, what we got here. And we get a press release. I think our, our next newsletter is going to have a press release in it. As soon as we get that, we'll, we'll get that out. Hopefully, hopefully as soon as tomorrow. Um, if you want to get a copy of that press release, you need to make sure that you subscribed. And if you get our other newsletters, then you have. If you don't get our newsletters, then you'd want to want to come here and subscribe. We've got a link to our resources. Bang! It's a uh, forward slash corona da coronavirus dash downloads and I'll drop that in our thing here. You're welcome, Bridget. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us every day. And uh, also a reminder, you saw where Tom just was in the links. If you haven't gone there, go there, check it out. There's a lot of good stuff there. Yeah, so, uh, uh, clicking uh, yeah, clicking on stuff. All right. Okay, guys. Well, thank you. Uh, you guys stay safe, and uh, we'll we'll see you tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern.
See you tomorrow, Rebecca. Bye.